Okay, it's on. Uh, is it recording, Chris? Yes, it's recording. Uh, brilliant. Uh, my name is Sean Fitzgerald from Observe. What is is uh, the, the, the subject of this video today is on business owners, and I've got Chris here. He owns an electrical training business, and we're going to talk. We're going to be talking to him a little bit about his business. Uh, okay, introduction, Chris. Uh, your full name, your age, are you married, and a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm uh, Chris Milton, Christopher Cecil Milton. I'm 58 years old. I'm married. I have two children. My children I've got my daughter who's uh, 29 years old. My son who assists me with the business, Stephen, he's 25. Okay, wonderful. And a little bit about yourself? Well, um, 40 years as a mechanical artisan, did a lot of training. And about 20 years ago, I found that being a mechanical artisan, working as a mechanical fitter, if I had to have a bit of an electrical background, I saw how it would actually have changed my life. And for the last 20 years, just concentrating on electrical. I've since become a Megatronic Success and Facilitator. And I run my own little training business over here called Umbilo Training Specialist. And uh, we are there to make a difference in people's lives. Okay. Unlike what we sorry. No, no, carry on. Yeah. Carry on. Unlike what the most training providers are offering at you, very cosmetic training, stuck in the 1960s, 1970s, we, I can truly tell you we've evolved at time. Just okay. look at the camera, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I can truly tell you we've evolved at time. We can take a guy straight from grade 12, in a matter of a few days, put him on the same page as an electrical engineer. And that is big. not necessarily with all the fancy sums and calculations, but his knowledge base, his basic foundation. Many of the people that come have already got their national diploma, have got their N6, have got their degree. And one of the first questions I ask them, how is electricity made? Because that is the basic foundation of, of understanding electricity. And 95% have got no clue. They Chris, can make, I want to stop you. How is electricity made? Well, it's all about rolling loops of wire through magnetic fields. And that's what people don't understand. They think it's about coal, it's water. I said, then it's like you telling me it's diesel and petrol. That's not telling me how electricity is made. Okay, and most people do not understand it. And I found this is what a lot of people lack is the basic understanding then for them to ever analyze and fault find on electrical circuits or get machines or operations back on, 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 on track. And, uh, you know, I feel that there's so many people's lives that I've changed in what my type of training. I don't just concentrate. I get people to RTFM. That's the big secret that was given to me when I was an apprentice at Line Match Company with my manager. He told me, Chris, RTFM. I didn't understand it in the beginning, and then I found out what it was. Read the freaking manuals. Okay. You have to become manual literate. And this is what I train people to become manual literate, where they can take a machine manual of a particular process, okay, and understand every chapter, right from the electrical side, the mechanical side, the production side, the expectations of your production team, and we can take it and actually get a guard. Not just a, like a guy that's just focused on electrical, can only read chapter three and chapter four because he only understands electrical or understand just pneumatics or understand just the hydraulic side. <clears throat> he needs to be able to understand that machine manual in its entirety. And that's what I, that's the whole drive behind Megatronics is about getting people to RTFM. But Megatronics has been all for all different centers. Their focus is on something different. You get like Stellenbosch University, they will focus on the electronic side where you'll get Cape, Cape Peninsula University of Technology. They will concentrate on another side. I, contra I concentrate on industrial automation. I'm not going to teach you how to launch rockets into space and satellites on the moon. I'm going to teach you exactly what industry needs, how for you to go into the real world environment and make it hit the job market running. Thank this you. Is Thank you, Chris. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was brilliant. Thank you, Chris. Uh, that's basically the nature of your business, am I correct? You in the, you train people in the electrical field. Uh, to exactly what what would what would they be working with again? What would well, I prepare people. Okay, it's not just on the electrical field. Remember, nothing exists in isolation today. Today, you cannot just be an electrician without the skills of knowing what the mechanical guys learn. Because you find your electrical steps like motor mechanics. A lot of them have to go on computerized courses on PLC courses. Okay, and these courses enable a person to absolute fault. Remember, the whole thing what a person must be, must remember when he works in industry is that production is king. People are not employing us in industry just so that we can help produce. We are indirect. We are not directly involved in baking the loaves of bread or on part of the manufacturing machine. We are production support personnel. Okay, and so this is why we need to have skills to get that machine. Back online as quickly as now, now, Chris, I don't want to interrupt you there, but so what do you train people to be electricians? 
No, well, yo, well, to be technicians. Technicians. Yes, yes. Uh, well, electrical fix, plays a very important they, role of it. Yeah. They uh, technicians to fix uh, machines, production machinery, the electrical side, mechanical side, specialized in the industrial automation. Oh, okay, okay. So that's quite a specialized yeah, field. Yeah. All right, I'm going to ask you, uh, have you ever owned, uh, you, the, the, the company's name is Ambilo? Ambilo Training Specialist. All right, great. I'm going to ask you, have you ever owned a business in another field? Have you always been in this? No, I've, I've, I've always worked, uh, only two years now that I've been working for myself, but I've always worked for employers. But I can assure you that every place I've worked for, as a training director of, of a decentralized trade test in Seton Derma, I had that entrepreneurial attitude where I would treat that business as if it's my own. So for, to be a trainer, to be a good trainer, you need to have the passion. Your passion has to, your heart has to be in it. And the only rewards that you get, okay, is watching your people develop. And okay. I can assure you that if the training I have an offer, if you can get that better anywhere else in South Africa, I'll give you all your money back, 10,000 Rand and a free laptop. Okay. Value for money, you will not get better than what I've got to offer. Thank you, Chris. I want to ask you just briefly, why did you start a business in this field? Was it passion? Was it? Do you like this sort of work? You know, I've I've always worked for someone else, but in training, I always used to run my own little small hobby type of business on weekends, okay, just on Saturday and Sundays. And my passion has always really been in, in developing people. But even working as one of the big blue chip companies in in South Africa, that's an automotive manufacturer, when I was their maintenance coordinator, part of my job. Okay, was to also be able to facilitate the to, to facilitate all the, the, the production processes. I couldn't just dispatch an electrician without knowing his strengths and weaknesses to a certain area of the plant. So this is why as a maintenance coordinator, I had to know my strengths and weaknesses of all my artists. Do you love the field though? You obviously yes, I'm love very, it. You very can interested see, in it. You can, see, yeah. you can see that you love it. I mean, it yeah. just comes across so naturally. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, did you have some challenges starting your own company? What yes. kind of challenges did you well, have? Well, you know, you, you, in the heart, where I'm, I've actually got my training centers, in the heart of all the FET colleges, and there's a lot of training centers mm. surrounded me. But what's, what is making me f to become, I've got the edge, and why I feel I have the edge on these other training centers and colleges, okay? Because I've evolved a time. I'm not stuck in the 1960s or the 1970s. You can check that with equipment with my limited budget. I had to access my bond to actually get a bit of okay. uh, money, uh, a, a couple of thousand rand, so I can buy equipment. Okay, And I can honestly tell you, that's why when I was doing training for the Australians in Mozambique, and one of their superintendents saw the simulation boards that I had built, he ordered one from me. Tell okay. me, tell me, if, uh, off the top of your head, how much would it, um, how much would it cost to start a business in your field? Just off the top of your head, what, what, what capital are we looking yeah. at? You know, to, to, the way I started it, it wasn't that I outload hundreds of thousands of rands. Mm. Okay, I had to remember it's all about growing. You have to grow with the time. Sure. Okay, so I bought up there when I initially started. I bought myself a few contactors, a few, and very fortunate, my brother who owned a a, a, a factory, a pr production workshop mm. in Pine Town. Okay, he actually allowed me to use one of his offices and then I would just charge a person 60 rand a day. Let me teach you how to wire up a motor, how to connect contactors. And since then, I've just grown and grown so and just, grown. So uh, you didn't, uh, didn't, it wasn't a large capital investment no, no. initially. I started you sort of grew it from small. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask you, what are the present benefits to you of your business personally? Not, not just training other people, but I mean benefits in terms of freedom as a business owner. What, you know, what benefits you, do you You're have? very much your own boss now. I mean, I, I st very much your own boss. No, now. Fine, fine. I don't have to uh, clock in at seven o'clock and clock out at half past four. I can stay here to ten o'clock because I know we're doing this type of business. The more you put in, the more you're going to get out. Okay. And what actually drove me is because of not being able to earn enough money because I've never came from a wealthy background, not earning enough money. And I saw that my son was struggling to get employment. And this is when I took him under my wing and I says, Stephen, this is the way we go. We are uh, going to start this business together, and that's how we uh, progress. Chris, your son works with you in your company? Yeah, my son is my senior instructor. He's trade tested as an electrician, very senior. I mean, that's what people and ask me. you also do that? Sorry, yes, I don't yes, want to yes, You're I'm, also the yes, trainer. Yes, yeah, yes, you're yes, saying yes, people yes. ask you? You said people about your son. He's the trade people ask you. Sorry, did I? Yeah, yeah. No, um, no, what I'm trying to say, I don't think I've come across another facilitator or trainer that is knowledgeable and I'm not just taking my own saying that sure. what I've talked has knowledge but in the field of PLCs, AC drives, pneumatic systems, understanding industrial automation, temperature controllers, sensors, 
No other training center can offer you this all under one umbrella. Right. But people need to understand what Megatronics is all about. <clears throat> it's an umbrella. It's on a container of skills. Okay, It's about enabling a person to be able to become virtually trained instead of just relying on structured training, where he can take, with the, when, when, after I've equipped him with these advanced technical skills, he'll be able to take a machine manual and read it in its entirety. Okay, So he'll know exactly how that machine works Thank without you. ever seeing it work. Thank okay. you, Chris. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You can see uh, Chris is very uh, passionate. He's a wonderful, uh, passionate guy about his business, and uh, yeah, he's got he's got so much knowledge to share. Um, all right. Uh, what? <clears throat> okay. What are your present challenges for running your business in terms of uh, clients or bringing or money or bringing in income? Are there challenges to keep it running for you um, and your family and your, and no, your son? No, there's always challenges. Though. And you no, know, the whole thing is that you know. <clears throat> One of my most difficult things, this hour, I actually want to say, is when you, most people don't have the money to actually pay for the training up front. Okay. okay. And this is why you'll let them go into some sort of a, a payment plan with you, an agreement that you have with you. Is that a and challenge? It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty challenge because people, you know, once you take that information, you've given them that information, you give them so much information. It's hard to get the money out of them. Yes, yeah. yes. And remember, they, if they leave you without even you, they're getting your certification or getting some letter from you, okay. the, you can't take that knowledge back from them. And most of my people that come to me already got their degrees. They already got their national diplomas. Okay. But they are most of them are unemployable graduates. But I make a difference in their life. Just to give you an example, I had one of the students with me, and I can mention her name, whom Zilla Nkobo. She has already got her national diploma in, in electrical engineering. And she was working as a waitress at one of the places over here for a couple of months, six months, I think it was up to a year, until she came to me. Three weeks later, her life had changed. That's why, and still today, she thanks me for the role and what I played in her life to do it. And she says, as a direct result of the training that I gave you. He says, not what you got to in-service training at all the companies, this 12 months of in-service training. She said, Chris, we actually learned absolutely nothing. As a direct result of what you taught us and how you managed to develop this picture in our mind, exactly what the real world is all about. And these are one of the very... Uh, positive things I've had from my students. That's what, and that's what actually motivates me to want to actually pass on more information thank to you. Me. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. It was great. Um, all right. Would you, uh, would you just briefly, would you recommend this type of business to somebody starting out? You know, your heart has to be in it. It's not like a lot of the, the colleges that we've got in Durban and in KZN, where people are just pitching up to work. It's, it's, it's a job for them. If you don't have your heart, if, you, if you're not searching for that, if you don't have that passion to want to see the results, I say it's like a parent taking their child to the, to, to the fun fair. The parent doesn't really get much joy. The only joy that parent gets is watching the children enjoy themselves and progress through life. Okay? And this is one of the things that I've found with a lot of my students. And you know what? Sometimes it's that comment and that praise you get off to it. It actually just wants you to come back and actually try further. Oh, great. Thank you, Chris. Uh, is there growing? Is the prospects good in the future for, for this field, for this training of, of people? Uh, in the electrical field for technicians, is it, is it, is it growing? Um, training, yes, but bearing in mind that one of our challenges, and you know, I didn't quite put it across to what we no, actually sure. have here, is having to compete with this free government inferior training. Okay. okay. Um, uh, believe me, I can honestly tell you, uh, most of my students have already got the NC, but don't understand the basics of electricity. I've actually did an assessment recently, and this is no not me making up lies or making up stories, but I can produce the evidence if it's needed. I took a guy that came to me, and I was busy doing assessments, and he had already had his N5, okay, and he was waiting for his N6 results. He had already done nine and a half months training, Megatronics training, with a Mesita accredited certificate. I don't want to mention the company's name. With a Mesita accredited certificate. And he'd done this assessment, and he got 38% for this assessment. I then measured, in the same group of assessment, a person who just had grade 12 and it had, I think it just had grade 12 and N2. He got 32% for the same assessment. So what does it tell me? That this person with all this training, all this nine and a half months of practical do, can only perform 6% better than someone that has never been trained. So when you try and compare apples with apples, what do you measure? Who is a better investment? Yeah. And my advice to that youngster was, you should scrub his CV clean. Don't even mention people that you've got this training because you've raised such a high expectation of your abilities, okay? And I tell you, you're going to disappoint. So try not overemphasize 
okay, of your skills and ability. Make sure, even if you get that certificate, that you can back it up with the skills, but don't even, it's not even worthwhile mentioning. That's why even the deals with experience, guys. Experience is important, but experience does not result in better skills, better performance, higher achievements. That experience is absolutely worthless. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chris. Tips and suggestions for anybody starting a business, not necessarily in your field, just briefly. Uh, what suggestions or tips would you give to somebody that's coming out of school that wants to start a business or somebody that's older, 40, 50, 60, that's also wanting, got some extra money and wants to start a business? What would your uh, uh, suggestions be to them? My best advice is for a person to actually read the market, okay, and try and fill a gap. There's no use you coming, especially if you're kind of coming to training, there's no use just offering what everyone else is offering. You've got to see where that gap is and you get, this is why when we came into business, we saw where the gap was. People weren't offering quality training. And plus, when I looked at the, and me being a decentralized, a training director of a decentralized training testing center, okay, having pressure from the seaters, okay, when we used to, we used to push out 135 trace at some months, 135 trade tested artisans each month, just to satisfy the seaters. Okay, and for every artisan we pushed out, we would get 12,000 Rand for the seater. And if we got him to pass first time, we'll get another 2,000 rand. So you're Regard also, sorry, Kerry, no, sorry, yeah. I don't want to Regardless if he had paid for it or not. So your suggestion was to read the market in terms of the business they want to go into. Would you say that's key? Yes, I would say read the market. But if, even if you're going to make sure, if you do, are going to offer what everyone else is going to offer, make sure you can offer a much better quality. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Okay, we're going to talk, we're going to do the little expo uh, on the business now. And I'm going to ask you what's, unique about your training i know you've mentioned it a few times in the, in the in the interview but specifically just repeat it again what's unique just briefly what's unique about your business your training business in your field as compared to your com your competitors okay you know most of the guys that are into training and all that they, they chase unit standards they'll stick into the format they are measured by tick box assessors the passion is not into training this is why i made a point of designing all my own manuals Okay, I've compiled my own manuals, I've taken a bit, I've got 40 years experience there in the industry and I've taken all the, the information and the knowledge that I've accumulated and I've stuck in. That's why I says when I run my Megatronics course, it comes with seven different manuals. Chris, I want you to show those pictures of this that we brought here. Just give them, don't, don't give them too, don't give too much, but just show some yeah, of your diagrams. Uh, guys, these are the type of, where I'll teach guys how to design complicated pneumatic circuits. Alright, that's okay. great. Guys, remember the only way you can measure understanding Okay, can one. you actually see the type of things we actually work out, the demonstrations? Remember, you see that A plus B plus, that's the sequence of operation. Okay, okay. Great. but there's tons of them that we've actually got in our manuals. And you know, some of your, just, okay. just briefly. The manuals just... that we've actually compiled, yeah, yeah, me and my son have compiled. Okay, we've got our electrical manuals so that these ones mainly just concentrate, taking people right up to trade test level and beyond. Okay, we've okay. our PLC manuals. Okay, comes with three different sets of manuals. Nowhere else you'll see these manuals anywhere else in the country could compile it ourselves. Just open one of them. Let's just see okay. how it looks inside. Guys, you see that inside, the, the, the F, the, 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 you, can you, can, you, uh, uh, you can actually see all the sequences of... Look at the, the quality and the training that yeah. Chris gives here. I mean, this is amazing. Where you teach look guys how to design. And you compile these all by your son, or you and your son. Me and my son have put them the, shared ideas. And shows you the we learned a lot from our students. Eh? And the we've training been, that, that Chris gives to his, uh, if you want to be an electrician or an electrical technician, uh, please, you need to. We're going to we're gonna get Chris's uh, details now. I want you, Chris, to leave. Oh, uh, one more thing, just very briefly. We're right at the end, Chris, just briefly. Anything else you want to add that I missed out, but briefly? Yeah, and also, I can assure people, um, the type of training that I offer, if you can get better anywhere else in South Africa, value for money, I will give every cent back to you, 10,000 rand, and I will give you a free, a, a free laptop. Okay? Uh, it's even on the first Saturday of each month, I offer a free introduction course, and I assure people, that I will increase your knowledge, no matter what degree you got in electrical engineering, I will increase your knowledge by tenfold in one day. If I do not do that, I will consider giving you a, a free laptop. All right, okay. thank you, thank you, Chris. Uh, okay, now we're gonna, your, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this uh, slowly, I'm gonna ask you for your full company name, then your full address, and then your contact details. What's the full company name again, Chris? Umbilo Training Specialist. And your physical address? It's 416 Umbilo Road, and I'm in Office 7. 
and that's in Durban. That's it's in, in, based in, in Durban, in, yes. In Ambilo, in yep. Durban, right? What is your contact details, telephone number? My, my contact details is 084-540-8437. Okay. Won't you repeat that for the viewers? 082. So you, 084. No, 082. 082. Sorry, yeah, sorry, I made a okay. mistake. 082-540-8437. Sorry, viewers, I just, I thought it was, I thought he said 084. Sorry, it was a mistake. Yeah, all right, 082. Um, do you have anything else? Do you have like a website or is it just... Well, that? if people want to know exactly what I've got offer and comments from my students, they can go onto my Facebook page, I'm Below Training Specialist, okay. and you can see I've got photographs of all the lecturers I've trained. A lot of my students' photographs are actually put on there. A lot of the students that actually come from all the way from Johannesburg just to attend my free introduction course. And they tell me, Chris, for all the money that I spent on traveling and accommodation was worth every cent. Many people are changing life in one day. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chris. We're at the end of the interview now. Um, I just want to say thank you to Chris for sharing his uh, business ideas with us. Please, this is Observe What Is Is. Sean Fitzgerald here. Please leave your comments and suggestions. <clears throat> and if you like this video, and subscribe. It's free. Thank you, Chris. We're at the end. Won't you just <clears throat> hit the red button for me? And just tell me when it's off.